A verse-by-verse -verse study in the book of Daniel, ESV, with Irv Rish, chapter 7. What does Daniel chapter 7 mean? The book of Daniel can be divided into two languages, as well as two themes. The first portion of the book describes events that happened during Daniel's earthly life. Starting in chapter 7, this focus shifts to prophecies about the future. Likewise, the first portion of the book is mostly recorded in Aramaic, Daniel 2 4, 728, rather than Hebrew. This represents how those stories are meant to carry a message to the non Jewish world. Daniel chapter 7 is where these segments dovetail together the last chapter speaking to the world at large, and the first emphasizing events of the end times. These prophecies are among the most impactful in the entire Bible. Concepts introduced here will be reflected in Jesus' ministry and echoed in the book of Revelation. Daniel experiences a prophetic dream. He sees heaven-directed winds roiling the Mediterranean Sea, from which come four animal-like creatures. In parallel with Nebuchadnezzar's earlier dream, Daniel 2 32, 37-38, the first symbol represents the Babylonian Empire, depicted as a winged lion. The second beast looks like a bear. The details coordinate with Nebuchadnezzar's dream image of the Medo Persians. The third creature symbolizes the Greeks under Alexander the Great, Daniel 2 verses 32 and 39. These correspond to the predicted line of empires that would dominate the Mediterranean region, Daniel 7 verses 1 to 6. The fourth creature is not associated with any specific animal. It is wholly unique and unlike the others. Daniel will provide more details about this beast after he asks for further wisdom. For now, Daniel can only describe it as horrifying and powerful. This beast has iron teeth and bronze claws, Daniel 7 verse 19. It utterly obliterates everything in its path. Daniel also sees a series of horns, ten at first, followed by a smaller horn. This little horn displaces three of the original horns, has human-like eyes, and speaks strong and impactful words, Daniel 7 verses 7 to 8. Next, Daniel sees a vision of God the Father seated on his throne and surrounded by an uncountable number of heavenly beings. The Lord, or, the Ancient of Days, prepares to judge the world. According to that judgment, the first three beasts follow a somewhat normal progression of power. They rise and fall, but each gives way to the next. The fourth beast, however, is killed, destroyed, and incinerated, Daniel 7 verses 9-12. What Daniel sees next becomes crucial imagery for Jesus' ministry in the New Testament. The vision displays a heavenly figure approaching God the Father. The newly arrived person is described as, one like a son of man. This was understood as a reference to a Messiah, a promised one who would rescue Israel. During his earthly life, Jesus often referred to himself as the, son of man, evoking this very prophecy, Matthew 26 verse 2, Mark 14 verses 61 to 62, Revelation 14 verse 14. The Son of Man is endowed with absolute power and authority over the entire earth. He is established as the ruler of an eternal, permanent kingdom, Daniel 7 verses 13 to 14. Though Daniel was gifted in understanding visions, Daniel 1 verse 17, he was still human. These images made him anxious they suggested something dire in the future. Worse, they were not immediately understood, probably making them even more intimidating. So, Daniel asks one of the nearby heavenly beings for help. Many commentators believe this is the angel Gabriel, Luke 1 verses 26-38. Gabriel is later tasked specifically with explaining prophecies to Daniel, Daniel 8 verse 16, 9 21. The being explains that the beasts are four, kings, or nations, which will come from humankind. He reassures Daniel that God's people will have an eternal, unending kingdom, Daniel 7 verses 15-18. Daniel presses for more understanding of the fourth beast. Here, he gives more details about what he saw. The creature had iron teeth and bronze claws. 
The little horn that displaced three others is credited with making war on God's people and winning. This victory was temporary, lasting only until the judgment of God which defeated this evil figure, Daniel 7 verses 19-22. The same being who explained the other images provides an explanation of this fourth beast and the little horn. As prophecies go, this is an unusually direct and simple interpretation. The fourth beast, in Daniel's dream is a unique form of government that will utterly dominate and conquer the entire world. There will be ten kings, some kind of rulers or leaders, in this worldwide empire. A new leader will emerge, somehow defeating three of the original ten leaders. This figure will blaspheme God, persecute his saints, and arrogantly presume to change God's laws. Yet his time will be short, three and one half years, Daniel 7 verses 23 to 25. When the time is right, the same court of judgment Daniel saw earlier, Daniel 7 verses 9 to 10, will obliterate this evil kingdom and its ruler. The people of God will be restored. Believers will be given an eternal place in an everlasting kingdom, serving God, Daniel 7 verses 26 to 27. Even though he knows what the vision means, Daniel is still deeply affected by what he sees. His face grows pale, or perhaps flushes, with the magnitude of these future events. He writes down his dream and the meaning. Perhaps Daniel did not share this experience with anyone, other than in his written account. Or, he may have committed himself to studying the vision further. In one of those ways, or perhaps both, he holds the prophecy in his heart, Daniel 7 verse 28. Chapter Context This chapter is the intersection of two different divisions in the book of Daniel. This is the last passage written in Aramaic, the common language of the world at that time. It is also the first segment focusing on prophecy, shifting from a record of events in the past to show a glimpse of the future. This passage connects to other descriptions of the end times, such as those found in Revelation chapters 13, 19, and 20. Verse by verse. Verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and visions of his head as he lay in his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and told the sum of the matter. Since the second chapter, the book of Daniel has been recorded in Aramaic, the language of the Gentile world at that time, rather than in Hebrew. The stories and messages in those passages were meant, at least in part, to be heard and absorbed by the non-Israelite world. Chapter 7 marks an intersection, the last segment written in Aramaic and the first of the prophecies which take up the rest of the book. Starting in chapter 8, the text is recorded in Hebrew and the prophetic implications are mostly intended for Israel. At the same time, this chapter shifts from third-person to first-person perspective. The king mentioned here, Daniel 5 verse 1, is controversial, as some archaeologists suggest there was never a Babylonian king named Belshazzar. This debate is complicated by vague and often contradictory ancient records. One possible explanation is that Belshazzar is a regional name given to evil Merodach, 2 Kings 25 verse 27, Jeremiah 52 verse 31, the briefly ruling son of Nebuchadnezzar. Another is that the historically accepted king, Nabonidus, left his son, Belshazzar, as co-regent of the territory while traveling. Hebrews 1 verse 1 observes, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. This was most often by direct, personal revelation. Sometimes those revelations came in the less overt form of dreams and visions. With the completion of the writing of the inspired scriptures, God primarily communicates by means of His Word. Nothing revealed through general revelation, creation, the indwelling Holy Spirit, or dreams will contradict what God has revealed in His Word. Generally, the Bible distinguishes between dreams and visions in that they occur during sleep and while awake, respectively. The vision depicted in this chapter occurred during the first year of Belshazzar's brief reign, Daniel 5 verse 30. This was probably 553 BC, 14 years before Babylon fell to the Medes and Persians, Daniel 5 verse 31. 
Context Summary Daniel 7 verses 1-12 looks back to a time before the story contained in chapter 6. This passage describes a dream Daniel had during the rule of Belshazzar, Daniel 5 verses 1 and 30. His visions contained information about various kingdoms leading up to a dreadful, strong kingdom in the end times. The images also pictured God, the Ancient of Days, who judges the final Gentile kingdom. An angel's explanation of the dream and visions follows in the next passage. Verse 2. Daniel declared, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. This begins the description of a dream Daniel had during the early rule of Belshazzar, Daniel 7 verse 1. This verse switches from the third-person point of view to Daniel writing as if he was speaking directly, the first-person perspective. That change coincides with this book's change from concrete stories to the imagery and symbolism of prophecy. The first thing Daniel saw in his dream was the sea being thrashed from the four cardinal directions, by winds controlled by heaven. As this is a dream, the description is not meant to imply anything about the nature of weather or wind in the real world. Scripture often pictures God revealing His presence or judgment in the wind, 1 Kings 19 verse 11, Psalm 18 verse 10, 50 verse 3, Amos 1 verse 14. The mention of the Great Sea points to the Mediterranean, not the smaller Red Sea or the Sea of Galilee. The scene where Daniel's dream takes place portrays the Mediterranean region, from their four tumultuous kingdoms emerged. These four kingdoms, Daniel 7 verse 17, are described in subsequent verses as animal-like creatures. From God's standpoint each kingdom is bestial, brutal, immoral, savage, and ignorant of God. Just as Daniel saw heaven's winds influencing the sea, Scripture portrays God's ultimate control over the empires that emerged in human history. Verse 3. And four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. Daniel is seeing a dream, containing a prophetic vision from God, Daniel 7 verse 1. This began with the sight of winds, sent by heaven from the four compass points, to agitate the Mediterranean Sea, Daniel 7 verse 2. This places the rest of the vision in the Mediterranean region and implies that God is ultimately in control of what happens. From the sea come four animal-like creatures. Each is unique, but they share a few characteristics. This vision parallels the dream seen by Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 2 verse 1, who saw four kingdoms represented by different metals, Daniel 2 verse 31. Daniel's dream depicts these nations and their kings, Daniel 7 verse 17, as a lion, bear, leopard, and an unidentifiable beast with iron teeth and horns, Daniel 7 verses 4 to 7. Where Nebuchadnezzar's dream depicted these kingdoms in flattering terms, as precious or useful metals, Daniel's vision stresses the kingdom's brutish, immoral character. Throughout history, powerful nations have often been symbolized using animals. The bear is a historic metaphor for Russia. The United States is frequently caricatured as an eagle. China is often depicted as a dragon. The Apostle Peter compares immoral, corrupt, unrighteous men to irrational animals, creatures of instinct, 2 Peter 2 verse 12. Jude writes that such men are like unreasoning animals, Jude 1 verse 10. Savage empires act in accordance with their vicious, beast-like rulers. Verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then as I looked its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man, and the mind of a man was given to it. In a symbolic dream, Daniel 7 verse 1, Daniel sees a series of animal-like creatures emerging from the sea, Daniel 7 verses 2 to 3. Powerful nations are often symbolized as animals, such as the bear for Russia, the eagle for the United States, or a dragon for China. The beasts seen in Daniel's vision also represent nations and the kings of those nations, Daniel 7 verse 17. The first animal Daniel sees is mostly like a lion, but with eagle wings. A few scholars suggest this is a reference to Egypt, 
but most believe it represents the nation of Babylon. Archaeologists have discovered figures of winged lions in Nineveh, Nimrod, and Persepolis, the lion with wings was a symbol of Babylon. Such figures guarded the gates of the Babylonians' royal palaces. Ezekiel uses the picture of an eagle to symbolize Babylon, Ezekiel 17 verses 3 and 12. Jeremiah depicts Babylon's conquest of Judah with images of both lions and eagles, Jeremiah 4 verses 7 and 13. In the dream, Daniel saw the lion's wings removed. The beast was transformed into something more human. This may symbolize relatively humane advancements under Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 1 verse 1. In Nebuchadnezzar's dream, this nation was symbolized by the golden head of a statue, Daniel 2 32, 37 to 38. Verse 5. And behold, another beast, a second one, like a bear. It was raised up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, and it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. Daniel's prophetic dream, Daniel 7 verse 1, describes four animal-like creatures, Daniel 7 verses 2 to 3. These represent various nations from the Mediterranean region, Daniel 7 verse 17. The first beast was like a lion with eagle wings, Daniel 7 verse 4. This symbolizes the Babylonian Empire. The second beast, which appears like a bear, represents the Medo Persians. In the ancient Middle East, bears were primarily associated with great strength, and that empire's military was powerful. They were not thought of as graceful, as were lions or eagles, the animals associated with the preceding Babylonian Empire. That one side of the bear was higher, and the animal is commanded to move suggests it is lying down. The imagery notes how the Medes and Persians were not entirely united in their conquests. The three ribs likely symbolized the notable cultures overshadowed by Medo-Persia, Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon. The rulers of Medo-Persian probably assumed they were consuming other lands, but their doing so was by divine appointment. The bear does not consume until it is commanded to do so. Their exploits fulfilled God's will. The Medo Persian Empire began in Daniel's lifetime and continued until the days of Alexander the Great two centuries later, Daniel 7 verse 6. The silver arms of the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream represent this same kingdom, Daniel 2 verses 32 and 39. Verse 6. After this I looked, and behold, another, like a leopard, with four wings of a bird on its back. And the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. The third beast of Daniel's dream, Daniel 7 verses 1 to 3, also represents a powerful nation and king of the Mediterranean region, Daniel 7 verse 17. The first, a winged lion, symbolized the graceful and elegant Babylon, Daniel 7 verse 4. The second, a powerful but clumsier bear, depicted Medo Persia, Daniel 7 verse 5. The kingdom symbolized here is that of Macedonian ruled Greece under Alexander the Great. The beast is a leopard with four wings and four heads. Scripture makes note of leopards for their speed, Habakkuk 1 verse 8, Alexander was noted for how quickly he conquered territory from Egypt to India, from a relatively young age. When he died, his conquered territories were initially split into four nations ruled by his generals, Cassander, Lysimachus, Seleucus, and Ptolemy. These immediately fell into infighting and would eventually be overcome by the Roman Empire. Further references to this empire are made in Daniel, Daniel 8 verses 8 and 22, 11 colon 3 4. Greece was depicted as the midsection of bronze in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 2 verses 32 and 39. Verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth, it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Daniel's visions, Daniel 7 verse 1, included four animal-like creatures, representing kings and nations, Daniel 7 verse 17, 
from the Mediterranean region, Daniel 7 verses 2-3. Babylon was represented by a lion with wings, Daniel 7 verse 4. Medo-Persia was symbolized by a bear, Daniel 7 verse 5. Macedonian Greece was depicted as a leopard, Daniel 7 verse 6. These correspond to the nations seen in Nebuchadnezzar's earlier dream, Daniel 2 verses 31-33, 37-39. The fourth nation, described here, doesn't correspond to any animal which Daniel knows. This beast has ten horns, iron teeth, and bronze claws, Daniel 7 verse 19. It's an intimidating sight, as it destroys and crushes whatever it does not consume. This represents the Roman Empire, also represented by iron in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 2 verses 32-33, 40. In Daniel's prophetic dream, this fourth beast has ten horns, which will be explained to represent ten kings, Daniel 7 verse 24. These will be followed by another, horn, representing a key figure of the end times, Daniel 7 verse 8. The New Testament and other records attest to Rome's merciless persecution of Christians. Peter's reference to the fiery trial that lay ahead for Christians likely refers to Emperor Nero's cruel burning of Christians at the stake, 1 Peter 4 verse 12. Whatever Rome could not absorb under its rule, it annihilated. The empire was known for its merciless conquest and assimilation. Rome conquered the whole breadth and length of the Mediterranean world and all the territories ruled by the former empires. Verse 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. What Daniel sees in this dream, Daniel 7 verse 1, is highly poetic. The images he experiences are not recordings of literal events, these are prophecies about nations that will arise in the Mediterranean region, Daniel 7 verses 2-3, 17. The first three images are animal-like and represent the empires of Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece. The fourth is a bizarre, terrifying creature with iron teeth, ten horns, Daniel 7 verse 7, and bronze claws, Daniel 7 verse 19. The first ten horns symbolize ten kings, Daniel 7 verse 24, but they are followed by another, smaller horn. Daniel sees this, little horn, emerge from the other ten. It has human eyes and a mouth, the mouth delivers strong words. The literal word used can mean boastings, or possibly, big talk. Later, the little horn speech will be depicted as blasphemy and bluster, Daniel 7 verses 20 and 25. As it arises, three of the existing horns are torn out. Uprooting three other horns implies that the little horn usurped their power. Human eyes imply human intelligence. Other passages give interpreters more context to suggest the identity of these various horns, Daniel 7 verse 24. Revelation 17 verses 3 and 7, 12, 16. The ten horns are generally interpreted as ten kingdoms which will exist in the end times. These ten will place themselves under the rule of a single leader. Some commentators refer to this as the revived Roman Empire, Revelation 17 verse 8, the suggestion is that an even more ferocious Rome-like government will rule during the end times. Verse 9. As I looked, thrones were placed and the Ancient of Days took his seat, his clothing was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool, his throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. During Daniel's prophetic dream, Daniel 7 verse 1, he has seen four animal-like creatures which represent nations from the Mediterranean region, Daniel 7 verse 17. These are Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, Daniel 7 verses 2-7. From the last beast, Daniel sees the emergence of a unique horn. This horn exhibits intelligence and speech, Daniel 7 verse 8. Here, Daniel's attention shifts from imagery on earth to imagery in heaven. What he sees implies that God is judging these kingdoms. This is especially appropriate, as the dreamer's Hebrew name, Daniel, literally means, God is my judge. 
The focus of this new vision is, the Ancient of Days. This is a reference to the Lord God, the Creator, Genesis 1 verse 1, Psalm 90 verse 2. This title is appropriate because God is eternal. Ezekiel also portrays God seated upon His throne in dazzling splendor, Ezekiel 1 verses 26-28. Revelation chapter 4 also describes the Lord on His throne. Revelation 1 verse 14 describes the glorified Son of God as having hair as white, like white wool. In Daniel's dream, God's throne is made of flame with wheels of fire. It's hard to know exactly what it was Daniel was seeing, these words are his best effort to describe something that was likely impossible to capture in words. Fire is often used in scripture to indicate judgment. Ezekiel's vision also associated fire with God on his throne, Ezekiel 1 verses 26-27, and Revelation 4 verse 5 says, From the throne came flashes of lightning, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire. Verse 10. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him, a thousand thousands served him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, the court sat in judgment and the books were opened. The vision of God as judge continues in this verse, Daniel 7 verse 9. While dreaming of future kingdoms, Daniel 7 verses 3 to 7, 17, Daniel has also seen the Lord on a fiery throne in heaven, calling him, the Ancient of Days, Psalm 90 verse 2. References to fire emphasize God's judgment, because fire destroys some things and leaves others intact, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 13. The Lord's judgment is being highlighted because of the appearance of the little horn coming from one of the four symbolic beasts, Daniel 7 verse 8. The number Daniel records here is not necessarily meant as an exact count. The biblical expression, 10,000, is sometimes used metaphorically to mean, very many, much as modern English uses the word, millions. In literal terms, a thousand thousands is one million, and ten thousand ten thousands is one hundred million. The book of Revelation will use similar terms to depict the number of angels heard by John, Revelation 5 verse 11. Literal or not, the point is that the Lord commands an awesome, overwhelming force of spiritual beings. The books opened here appear to be different than those used at the great white throne judgment of the end times, Revelation 20 verse 12. Those books will be opened after the millennial reign of Christ. The books in this part of Daniel are opened in response to the boasting and blasphemy of the little horn, Daniel 7 verse 11. God will have a record of all the little horn's sinful thoughts, words, and deeds, Isaiah 65 verses 6-7. Hebrews 4 verse 13. The judgment on the little horn will be accurate and fully deserved. Revelation 19 verses 11 to 20 further describes the judgment that falls on the little horn, they're called, the beast, at Christ's return to earth. Verse 11. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. This directly associates the judgment previously mentioned, Daniel 7 verse 10, with blasphemy. These corrupt words, Daniel 7 verses 20 and 25, were spoken by the little horn, which came from the fourth beast, Daniel 7 verses 3 to 7, in Daniel's vision, Daniel 7 verse 1. Daniel sees this fourth beast incinerated. The others are spared, temporarily, to continue their allotted, limited time on earth, Daniel 7 verse 12. Some interpreters suggest this part of prophecy was fulfilled and the Greek ruler Antiochus Epiphanes was killed in battle in 164 BC. Others look to the collapse of the Roman Empire in AD 476. In our view, this part of Daniel more likely points to the judgment recorded in Revelation 19 verse 20. There, the beast and false prophet are thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. This judgment will mark the end of the times of the Gentiles that began with Nebuchadnezzar. To be sure, no human being or nation is so strong that God cannot dispose of him or it in an instant. Men and nations may grow strong, but God is eternally omnipotent. Verse 12 
As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Daniel's prophetic dream featured four animal-like beasts representing different nations, Daniel 7 verses 3-7, 17. At one point, Daniel's vision includes the sight of God sitting on a fiery throne of judgment, Daniel 7 verses 9-10. The fourth beast is incinerated. In this verse, the other three are allowed to continue. Since each represents a successive empire in the Mediterranean region, this cannot mean they all existed at the same time. This part of prophecy deals with the ultimate ends of those empires. Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece fell as empires but transferred that power to a later earthly power. Those who lived during the transition from one kingdom to the next lived more or less as they had before. The last, beast, controlled by a figure symbolized by a blasphemous, little horn, Daniel 7 verses 8 and 20, 25, is annihilated entirely. When God judges that nation, nothing will then remain. Revelation 19 verses 11 to 16 pictures Christ at the end of the tribulation. He returns to earth in a blaze of glory and strikes down the followers of the entity represented here in the book of Daniel. This is the world government represented by the fourth beast, which some interpreters associate with a revived Roman Empire. Even their dead bodies will not remain intact. An angel will invite scavenging birds to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, both small and great, Revelation 19 verse 18. This destruction of the final, beast, comes before a famous part of Daniel's prophecy. In the next verses he describes a coming figure, like a son of man, a title which will be applied to Jesus Christ, Daniel 7 verse 13, Matthew 26 verse 2, Mark 14 verses 61 to 62, Revelation 14 verse 14. Verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a son of man and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. In an earlier part of the dream, Daniel saw God the Father seated on a fiery throne of judgment, Daniel 7 verses 9 to 10. There, God was labeled as the Ancient of Days, Psalm 90 verse 2, and that title is repeated here. This Son of Man figure is brought before God and given immense power and authority, Daniel 7 verse 14. This Son of Man is a messianic figure. The concept of a Messiah comes from the Hebrew word Mashiach, which means the Anointed One. In Greek, this idea is expressed with the word Christos, which then becomes the English title, Christ. This is the long-awaited Savior promised as early as the fall of man, Genesis 3 verse 15. Other scriptures affirm this person would be a descendant of Abraham, Genesis 12 verse 3, from the tribe of Judah, Genesis 49 verse 10, and from the line of David and Solomon, 2 Samuel 7 verses 12 to 16. These are among many indicators pointing to Jesus of Nazareth as this prophesied figure. One of Jesus' most common titles for himself was the Son of Man, Matthew 26 verse 2, John 1 verse 51. He applied it around 30 times in the Gospel of Matthew, which was written primarily to Jews to show that he was Israel's Messiah and King. Others recognized this as a reference to the prophecy contained in this verse. Eventually, such statements were used to accuse Jesus of blasphemy, Mark 14 verses 61-64. Jesus finished the work of redemption on the cross and was resurrected, Luke 24 verses 1-7. He then met with his disciples for forty days and was seen ascending in a cloud, Acts 1 colon 3, 6 to 9. Two angels told the disciples that Jesus will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven, Acts 1 verse 11. Jesus himself said that he will come on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, Matthew 24 verse 30. Context Summary Daniel 7 verses 13-14 contains words and imagery crucial to the New Testament ministry of Jesus Christ. Daniel's nighttime vision continues with the appearance of a human-like figure, Son of Man. 
This title is among the most common used for Jesus Christ. In Daniel's vision, this person is granted great power by God, the Ancient of Days. After this, Daniel will ask that his prophetic dream be explained. Verse 14. And to him was given dominion and glory in a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him, his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. This part of Daniel's vision, Daniel 7 verse 1, pictures Jesus, the Son of Man, Daniel 7 verse 13, being honored and invested with supreme power. The previous verse associates this event with the clouds of heaven. This transaction happens through the will of the Ancient of Days, meaning God the Father. Daniel's depiction of this crucial figure is important for understanding New Testament events. Jesus applied this imagery to himself many times, Matthew 26 verse 2, John 1 verse 51. Daniel is seeing the eventual end of God's plan, where Jesus rules the world directly and in person, Matthew 25 verse 31, Revelation 11 verse 15. This event is also previewed in Revelation 5 verses 5 to 14. When Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, is formally given rule of earth, the occupants of heaven proclaim his worthiness to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing, Revelation 5 verse 12. The kingdoms Daniel saw arise from the sea ended, and the kingdom of the beast in the end time will be destroyed, but Jesus' kingdom will never be destroyed, Revelation 20 verses 1 to 6. Verse 15. As for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious, and the visions of my head alarmed me. Daniel was given great insight into dreams and visions, Daniel 1 verse 17. That did not mean he was all-knowing, he sometimes had to ask directly to discern meaning, Daniel 2 verses 17 to 19, 8 15. Nor did his God-given ability make Daniel immune to normal human emotions. These dramatic images would unsettle anyone, Daniel 7 verses 1 to 8. It seems this dream was especially obscure to Daniel. He senses the events are dire but does not entirely understand what he sees. And so, he will ask one of the angels in his vision to explain the symbols, Daniel 7 verse 16. Learning more didn't make the vision less frightening, Daniel 7 verse 28. When Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 2 verses 31 to 35, he saw visions corresponding to successive kingdoms, Daniel 2 verses 36 to 45. It's possible Daniel saw parallels to that dream and suspected the four beasts of his vision also corresponded to four kingdoms. Yet this new dream included new details not easily understood. Only when he asked for clarification would Daniel fully comprehend their meaning, Daniel 7 verse 17. It is to Daniel's credit that he requested help. Some Christians throw up their hands when they cannot understand parts of God's Word, Acts 8 verses 30 to 31, 2 Peter 3 verses 15 to 16. That's especially common when reading the richly symbolic accounts of end times prophecy. Yet believers can and should ask for help. The psalmist prayed, Open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of your law, Psalm 119 verse 18. Prayer for wisdom, James 1 verse 5, and the guidance of experienced believers are of great help in learning more about the meaning of Scripture, Proverbs 1 verses 1 to 7, 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. Context Summary Daniel 7 verses 15 to 28 offers a detailed interpretation of Daniel's dream and visions, Daniel 7 verses 1 to 14. The interpretation deals mainly with the fourth beast with teeth of iron and claws of bronze. It ends with the prediction that God will judge this fourth beast and give an everlasting kingdom to the Messiah. The New Testament reveals that this promised one is Jesus Christ, Acts 13 verse 23. Verse 16. I approached one of those who stood there and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of the things. Though he was given great skill, Daniel 1 verse 17, Daniel was not omniscient. Sometimes, the meaning of God's messages were clear, Daniel 5 verse 17. 
In other cases, such as this, he needed to ask for special assistance, Daniel 2 verses 17-19, 815. This new vision, Daniel 7 verse 1, made Daniel uneasy, so he asked one of the nearby angelic beings, Daniel 7 verse 10, for an explanation. That means Daniel didn't wait until the dream was over, he took the opportunity to seek an answer immediately. Scripture does not identify this being. Many commentators suggest this was the angel named Gabriel. Gabriel seems to have been God's appointed messenger at crucial times in the Bible. Luke 1 verses 11-13 reports that Gabriel announced the birth of John the Baptist to John's father Zechariah, cf Luke 1 verse 19. He announced to the Virgin Mary that she would give birth to the Savior, Luke 1 verses 26-33. Later in this book, Gabriel will be charged with explaining prophetic visions to Daniel, Daniel 8 verse 16, 9 21. Verse 17. These four great beasts are four kings who shall arise out of the earth. After seeing a troubling vision of beasts, Daniel 7 verses 1 to 8, and images of God in heaven, Daniel 7 verses 9 to 14, Daniel is unsettled, Daniel 7 verse 15. So, he asks one of the angelic beings in his dream to explain what has been seen, Daniel 7 verse 16. This being is not identified here. However, in other parts of Daniel's writing, he is given specific information from the angel Gabriel, Daniel 8 verse 16, 9 21. Many commentators suggest this verse refers to Gabriel, as well, as a common choice for delivering divine messages, Luke 1 19, 26 33. The messenger's first explanation concerns the four great beasts Daniel saw rising out of the sea. These are four kings, and their kingdoms, which will arise in the Mediterranean region of the world. These four kings and kingdoms represent the same information seen in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 2 verses 31-35. Daniel interpreted those visions on behalf of the Babylonian king, Daniel 2 verses 36-45. What Daniel sees describes Babylon, represented by the winged lion. This is followed by Medo-Persia, symbolized as a bear raised up on one side. A winged leopard describes Greece. Rome, finally, is depicted as a terrifying iron-toothed beast. When Daniel saw these creatures, he envisioned them coming out of the Great Sea, Daniel 7 verses 2-3. The messenger speaking here says these symbolize kings coming from the earth. Daniel's vision included a clue about the location of these kingdoms. The angelic being is emphasizing those nations' worldly character, they are of the earth as opposed to heaven. The four kingdoms are earthly, whereas the kingdom that follows in the end time is heavenly. The Bible teaches that the whole world, the inhabited world of mankind, is sinful, it is under the power of the devil, 1 John 5 verse 19. Verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. Daniel's vision of strange creatures, Daniel 7 verses 1 to 8, and their conflict with heaven, Daniel 7 verses 9 to 14, led to anxiety and fear, Daniel 7 verse 15. One of the angelic beings in Daniel's dream has explained that these are prophecies of human kingdoms that will arise in the Mediterranean region, Daniel 7 verses 15 to 17. This might have seemed daunting to Daniel, so here the being offers reassurance. Dire news and frightening images are interrupted by the word, but, leaving room for hope. The divine interpreter gives Daniel good news to go with the prior bad news. These earthly human kingdoms will not last forever. Yet true believers in God will be given an eternal kingdom. When the Messiah returns to earth to establish a literal thousand-year kingdom, some of his saints will have survived the tribulation, Revelation 7 verses 13 to 17. Others will be resurrected when their Messiah returns to earth, Daniel 12 verses 1 to 3. God has temporarily set aside Israel as a people, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, Romans 11 verse 25. However, God's covenant to David, 2 Samuel 7 verse 16, Psalm 89 verses 1 to 4, 
has never been rescinded. The times of the Gentiles will end, and the fulfillment of God's covenant will come to fruition. God's saints will receive the everlasting kingdom. Verse 19. Then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying, with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. Though gifted in dreams and visions, Daniel 1 verse 17, Daniel was fallible. His recent vision, Daniel 7 verse 1, made him unsettled and nervous, Daniel 7 verse 15. So, he wisely asked one of the angelic beings in his dream for an explanation, Daniel 7 verse 16. So far, the being has explained that the four beasts represent four kingdoms of earth, Daniel 7 verses 16 to 17, in parallel to those seen in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, Daniel 2 verses 31 to 35. In a hopeful addition, Daniel is told that God's people will inherit a kingdom that can never be destroyed, Daniel 7 verse 18. The first three animals in Daniel's vision shared enough parts with real-world animals to be associated with lions, eagles, bears, and leopards. The fourth, however, was simply described as terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong with iron teeth and, in a detail included here, bronze claws, Daniel 7 verse 7. Presumably, this is like no natural animal Daniel has ever seen. He asks for further details about this monster that brought destruction and devastation. This beast, history's final Gentile kingdom, conquers the previous Gentile kingdoms and shows no mercy as it does so. It mauls and crushes them with its bronze feet, Daniel 7 verses 7-8. Imperial Rome dominated as an empire. It showed no mercy as its powerful armies marched across country after country in the Mediterranean region, Daniel 2 verse 40. Yet the government ruling during the end times will somehow be even crueler. Its leader, one of the beasts of the book of Revelation, Revelation 13 verses 1-2, will be empowered by Satan. This tyrant will demand absolute submission and worship, and whoever refuses to worship him will not be allowed to buy or sell, Revelation 13 verses 15-17. Daniel will also ask about this beast's arrangement of horns, Daniel 7 verse 20, prompting an explanation of both, Daniel 7 verses 23 to 27. Verse 20. And about the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn that came up and before which three of them fell, the horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things, and that seemed greater than its companions. Daniel's dream, Daniel 7 verse 1, was distressing and needed explanation, Daniel 7 verses 15 and 19. Daniel has asked the interpreter, Daniel 7 verse 16, for the meaning of the fourth beast's ten horns and the smaller horn which emerged from among them, Daniel 7 verses 7 to 8. In this verse, Daniel repeats some of those earlier details. Three of the horns fell, and the horn that emerged had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things, probably meaning blasphemy and overt hatred towards God, Daniel 7 verse 25. Daniel observed that this horn seemed greater than the others. Earlier, Daniel referred to this horn as little, Daniel 7 verse 8. Perhaps Daniel watched this horn grow until it was big enough to displace three. This takeover, which defeated three other horns, showed that the king and kingdom represented by the eleventh horn was distinct from the others it would somehow be more powerful and prominent. This fourth beast captured most of Daniel's attention. Verse 21. As I looked, this horn made war with the saints and prevailed over them. In his prophetic vision, Daniel 7 verse 1, Daniel saw nations and kings represented by animals, Daniel 7 verses 2 to 8. When asking for further information, Daniel gives more details about what he saw. The most striking image of his dream was the fourth beast, whose ten horns were disrupted by the appearance of a little horn, Daniel 7 verse 8, which overpowered three of the others. Here, this same horn, which presumably spoke strong words of blasphemy, also successfully persecuted God's people, referred to as saints. Bible interpreters vary on their views of the end times. 
Many, however, believe there will be an intense period of persecution and worldwide trouble known as the Tribulation. This time is often associated with a figure known as the Antichrist. This world leader will persecute Christians and enact terrible violence against them. He will seize control of the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem and his forces will rule Jerusalem for three and a half years, Revelation 11 verse 2. In his Olivet Discourse, Jesus predicted this, which he called unprecedented great persecution, Matthew 24 verse 21. He advised, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, Matthew 24 verse 16. This Antichrist will be empowered by Satan, the devil, referred to as a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns in Revelation 12 verse 3. Satan will vent his wrath on the Jewish people by using the Antichrist and worldly power to hunt down the Jews. However, many saved Jews will flee to the wilderness, where they will be kept safe for three and a half years, Revelation 12 verses 1 to 17. Satan and the Antichrist will only prevail over God's people for a short while. Ultimately, Christ will return, Revelation 19 verses 11 to 16, and evil will be eliminated forever. Revelation 20 verses 7 to 15. As the following verse notes, God will not allow his people to be held captive forever, Daniel 7 verse 22. Verse 22. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High, and the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. Earlier in his vision, Daniel saw God and referred to him as the Ancient of Days, Daniel 7 verses 9 to 10. He observed Jesus Christ being given power and authority by God the Father, Daniel 7 verses 13 to 14. Though Daniel's dream meant that God's people would be oppressed and persecuted, Daniel 7 verse 21, this would only be a temporary condition. Revelation 19 verses 19 to 21 describes the downfall of this leader and his followers. The world leader symbolized by a little horn, Daniel 7 verses 8 and 20, of a strange beast will not win ultimate victory in his fight against believers. Revelation 17 verse 14 indicates that the beast and his forces attempt to make war against the Lord Jesus and will be conquered. The ten warring rulers and the beast are kings, but they are no match for Jesus, the Lord of lords and King of kings. Psalm 2 predicts that the kings of the earth will declare war on God's Son, but God will laugh at their arrogant ambition. He will present the ends of the earth to his son as his possession, Psalm 2 verse 8, and his son will destroy the rebellious nations, Psalm 2 verse 9. Verse 23. Thus he said, As for the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all the kingdoms and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down, and break it to pieces. In Daniel's prophetic dream, Daniel 7 verse 1, he was shown images of creatures which mostly resembled animals, Daniel 7 verses 2-6. The fourth and final beast, however, was terrifying and strange, Daniel 7 verse 7. Daniel observed a small horn emerging from ten others, Daniel 7 verse 8, to make war on God's people, Daniel 7 verses 20-22. Daniel has been asking for an explanation of his vision, Daniel 7 verses 16 and 19. In this verse, an angelic interpreter gives insight into the meaning of these symbols. The fourth beast represents a unique kingdom on earth. In Nebuchadnezzar's dream, the fourth kingdom, Daniel 2 verse 40, was imperial Rome. However, that empire did not control the entire world or all people. Unlike imperial Rome, the nation represented in Daniel's vision will bring conquest and devastation to the entire earth. This worldwide government will be under the rule of the beast that rises from the sea, Revelation 13 verse 1. Revelation 13 verses 7 to 8 says, An authority was given, to the beast, over every tribe and people and language and nation, and all who dwell on earth will worship it. According to that passage, the only people who refuse to worship the beast are those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. According to Revelation 12 verse 11, those who become believers in the tribulation will overcome the devil who empowers the beast. Verse 24. 
As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them, he shall be different from the former ones, and shall put down three kings. Daniel's prophetic dream included a bizarre beast with ten horns, three of which were overcome by the appearance of a new, smaller horn, Daniel 7 verses 7 to 8. This beast has been explained as a unique kingdom that will dominate the entire world, Daniel 7 verse 23. Here, an angelic interpreter, Daniel 7 verse 16, further explains the symbolism of the horns. The ten horns on the ferocious beast represent ten kings, national leaders, or emperors. Another horn would imply another ruler. This one usurps the rule of three of the kings. This eleventh horn is different from all the others. These ten kings are prominent in the end times, Revelation 13 verse 1, 1712. The eleventh king, the little horn of Daniel's vision, Daniel 7 verse 8, will have much more authority than the ten kings. He will extend his rule over the entire world, and he will be more hateful than the ten. He will pour out his hatred on God's people, the saints. Many expositors identify this horn as the Antichrist, while others see the false prophet of Revelation 13 verses 11 to 17 as that figure. The little horn, the eleventh horn, holds political sway over the world, whereas the false prophet exercises religious control over others. References to the Antichrist in the New Testament denounce his religious crimes, 1 John 2 verses 18 to 22, 4 verse 3, 2 John 1 verse 7. For this reason, many expositors identify the Antichrist with the apostate false prophet. Verse 25. He shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and shall think to change the times and the law, and they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. The Little Horn, Daniel 7 verses 7 to 8, a powerful leader who will seize power during the end times, Daniel 7 verses 21 to 24, will be a blasphemous, vicious persecutor of the saints. He will change laws and corrupt Jewish observances. Undoubtedly, he will cancel or drastically change the Jewish festivals. Bible interpreters believe this figure will present himself as Israel's friend, at first, and formulate a peace treaty. Yet after three and a half years, he will break the treaty and put an end to sacrifice and offering, Daniel 9 verse 27. Despite this worldwide power, God will restrict the little horn's reign of terror to a time, times, and half a time. This expression appears several times in Daniel's prophecies and seems to imply a period of three and a half years. Daniel 12 verse 7 places the end of, shattering of the power of the holy people, after, a time, times, and half a time. Revelation cites the time God safeguards his tribulation saints in the wilderness as, 1260 days, or, a time, and times, and half a time, Revelation 12 verses 6 and 14. Revelation 13 verse 5 says the beast, presumably, the same figure symbolized by Daniel as the little horn, will be allowed to speak haughty, blasphemous words. This figure will exercise authority for forty-two months, which is three and a half years. Verse 26. But the court shall sit in judgment and his dominion shall be taken away, to be consumed and destroyed to the end. In Daniel's prophetic dream, Daniel 7 verse 1, he has been warned about a uniquely powerful nation that will dominate the entire world during the end times, Daniel 7 verse 23. Leading this empire will be a figure who takes power from others and is known for blaspheming God and persecuting believers, Daniel 7 verses 24 to 25. However, this figure will not rule forever. In fact, his time in control will be relatively short, only three and a half years. At the end of, a time, times, and half a time, Daniel 7 verse 25, the little horn, Daniel 7 verses 7 to 8, will be judged by the court of heaven. God will bring this tyrant's reign of terror to an end. He will consume and destroy him and his evil empire. This person is associated with the idea of the Antichrist a Satan-empowered ruler during the end times. 
Some Bible interpreters suggest the figure symbolized by the little horn has already lived. However, no person has attained worldwide domination, overcome three major leaders, or overtly persecuted Israel for three and a half years. Other commentators suggest the horn refers to religious leadership, such as the Pope of the Catholic Church. Yet the little horn is depicted as a political leader, not a religious figure. The office of Pope has existed for many centuries, and no Pope has attained world domination. This verse points to the judgment that befalls the beast, the little horn, at Christ's return to earth, Revelation 19 verses 11-21. At that time, Christ captures the beast and the false prophet, throws them both alive into the lake of fire, and slays all the beast's followers. Verse 27 and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven's hall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. God's people will experience horrendous persecution under the head of a uniquely brutal worldwide empire during the end times, Daniel 7 verses 19-26. Yet this will not be the end of believers or the destruction of their faith. God will restore and reward His people after the end of the tribulation. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will return to earth, vanquish the little horn, Daniel 7 verses 7-8, and His evil rule, and bring defeat to all His accomplices and followers. Jesus promised that saved Jews and Gentiles would inherit the kingdom. Matthew 25 verse 34 quotes Him as saying to those who submit to His rule, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 5 verse 5 promises, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Daniel 7 verse 27 describes the fulfillment of this promise. One day, Christ will inaugurate His millennial kingdom and welcome the persecuted saints into it, Revelation 20 verses 1-6. Verse 28. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly alarmed me, and my color changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Daniel has experienced an intense, disturbing dream, Daniel 7 verses 1 and 15. He needed the assistance of an angelic being to grasp the meaning of what he saw, Daniel 7 verses 16 and 19. As explained, his vision predicted a time of horrific persecution and conquest at the hands of a powerful empire and its blasphemous ruler. Daniel 7 verses 7 to 8, 23 to 25. Fortunately, this time will be short and God will bring justice and judgment for his people. Daniel 7 verses 26 to 27. Although Daniel was deeply faithful to God, he was also human. His dream left him shaken and troubled. That his color changed implies becoming pale or flushed, both signs of emotional distress. Daniel 5 verse 6. Prophecy gives believers much to think about. Some of what it reveals can be gruesome. Those who have put their faith in Christ should rejoice that these prophecies reveal the Lord's victory over evil. However, like Daniel, it's also reasonable to be unsettled over the violence and turmoil which are caused by evil. The final sentence in this chapter indicates that Daniel kept this knowledge in his heart. This may mean that he did not share what he'd learned with others, instead choosing to only write it down. This is consistent with some of God's prophetic messages, which are meant to be delivered and then kept for a later time. Some of Daniel's other visions, in fact, are described in this way, Daniel 12 verse 4. It's also possible that Daniel means he worked hard to consider what he'd seen, striving to understand God's will, Luke 2 verses 19 and 51. This verse ends the part of Daniel's book written in Aramaic, Daniel 2 4, 728. During Daniel's life, this was the common language of the world. This suggests that what's recorded is meant as a message for the entire world, or at least as a warning to the non Jewish nations. The rest of Daniel's writing is in Hebrew, its contents are more directly targeted at the people of Israel. End of Daniel chapter 7. Please note. The material used in this post, 
video is from biblaref.com which is from God Questions Ministries and is posted here to be read by Immersive Reader in the Edge browser. If you copy this material please follow these rules. Content from biblaref.com may not be used for any commercial purposes, or as part of any commercial work, without explicit prior written consent from God Questions Ministries. Any use of our material should be properly credited, please make it clear the content is from biblaref.com. Bibleref.com content may not be altered, modified, or otherwise changed unless such changes are specifically noted.